this video, I'm going to demonstrate the fundamentals of electric circuits with this Investigating Electric Circuits Kit. The kit is designed to enable hands-on inquiry learning. You got your batteries, posts, switch, light bulb resistors, connecting wires, and sold separately ammeter and voltmeter, which have very clear displays and are easy to connect. And the pieces helpfully magnetize to the mat. The mat itself is also a whiteboard, which you will want to use when guiding instructions such as how to hook up a voltmeter or suggesting new circuit ideas. This kit is simple, easy, and fun to use, and it serves as a way for students to communicate their understanding. And the posts are particularly helpful, allowing you to connect up to five cables at once. It's so great how the components stick into place so they don't slide all around when you're making changes to the circuit. They got these neodymium magnets on the base. So if you would like to learn the basics of electricity, or if you've been frustrated with the equipment that you already use, then solve all these problems with the Investigating Electric Circuits Kit. Here, let me show you how it works. Number one, your first circuit. Here we form the simplest circuit by simply making a circle. A wire connects to a battery and to a light bulb. Then another wire back to the battery. The current is allowed to flow in a circle. That's what the word circuit means, circle. Any break in this flow would turn off the light bulb. This is a 1.5 volt battery and the bulb is not very bright for only 1.5 volts. What do you think will happen if I reverse the battery? Aha, it still works. It seems that light bulbs do not care what direction the current flows. Number two, batteries in series. So here we've got one battery, but what will happen if we add another? The bulb is now brighter. It appears that more voltage gives more current. Now what if I add a third battery? What? I thought it would be brighter. Oh, wait, look, this one was backwards. Aha, much brighter. That is a total of 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 4.5 volts. The batteries are like pumps that push the electric current. The harder they push, the more current can flow. Number three, light bulbs in series. Now with our three batteries, it's time to add a second bulb. What do you think this will look like? Yeah. The light bulbs have to share the voltage of the batteries. I bet you can guess what will happen if I add a third light bulb. Yep, now each bulb is getting one battery's voltage. That's 1.5 volts each, and they're all dim. Because light bulbs slow down the current, they're called resistors. They resist the flow. The law that explains this is called Ohm's law. The intensity of the current increases with the voltage, but it decreases with the resistance, which goes in the denominator. People usually write this as V equals IR because it's more convenient for algebra. Number four, your first switch. Going back to three batteries and one light bulb, I'm going to add a switch. A switch is a circuit breaker. That means it can interrupt the flow of current. But I'm sure you've used a switch before. Okay, here we go. Oh, it doesn't light. This is called an open switch. But when we close it, it lights up. Open, off. Closed. Number five, light bulbs in parallel. The arrangement here is called a parallel circuit. This means that the current is flowing in parallel paths through the bulbs. It is helpful to use the posts for these. 
Here, one bulb is glowing brightly, but when you add a second bulb, what do you think will happen? It also glows brightly. Are you surprised? What do you think will happen if I add a third bulb in parallel? All three now glow bright. How can we explain this? Each light bulb is connected directly to the batteries. That is, each bulb gets all 4.5 volts from this setup because there is nothing resisting their connection to it. Number six, the split circuit. Imagine I had this circuit. It is both parallel and series. How will the light bulbs be glowing in this circuit? Well, after the current flows from the battery, it then has to split for bulbs A and B, but then it comes back together for bulb C. So bulb C will get all the current and should be very bright. Let's close the switch and see if it's true. The flow of current is like the flow of water. Maybe three gallons split into one and a half and one and a half, but then come back together for bulb C who gets all of them. Number seven, the short circuit. Remember this circuit, three bulbs in series? What do you think will happen if I put a wire across the middle bulb? The middle bulb goes out completely and the other bulbs get brighter. Most of the current will flow through a path of least resistance. It is easier for the electricity to flow through this wire than this light bulb. Wires have very little resistance. Number eight, using an ammeter. This green circuit element is called an ammeter. You see, the current flowing in the circuit is measured in amps. We add the ammeter to our circuit, and we can see here that with the three bulbs, the current is only 212 milliamps. But when we short the circuit, we get 257 milliamps, which proves that more current flows through a shorter circuit. For just one light bulb, it is 355 milliamps, which is more still. You might be impressed by how small and convenient this ammeter is, not like those bulky, confusing ammeters. Number nine, using a voltmeter. This blue circuit element is called a voltmeter. It measures voltage. Let me show you. Here, this is a 1.5 volt battery, like I've been telling you. And two of them makes three volts, almost exactly. You can even use this to see how many volts each light bulb is using, no matter how complex your circuit. The ammeter and voltmeter both have these connecting wires with alligator clips on the end. They're so small and versatile, and they provide immediate feedback. Changing variables can be seen right away. From circuits such as these, you have now developed the basic vocabulary that you can use to create any circuits you want. And with the dry erase board, you can create and invent, which is an important concept in modeling. This kit gives you the freedom to build the circuits that you can think of and it's priced to own, much more affordable than other kits.